I'd like to begin by reciting about one of the harshest realities that we all have to face in our lifetimes, and I'm sure a reality that we have lived through uh, and uh, will experience as well uh, via our family members and people that we know, which is the reality of death. And the moments that we are lowered into the grave and seek the intercession of the beloved Ahl Bayt including Our Lady Fatima Zahra For what salvation does man have when he stands in the hereafter if he does not receive a glance from Fatima Zahra? When I'm lowered into my grave and all my loved ones disappear, the sins that once brought me pleasure, now they bring me only despair. I can feel the ground tighten whilst my lungs feel the lack of air. I see not, there's only darkness, only the void and gripping fear. How can I ever save myself from Munkar and from Nakir? How can I ever save myself from Munkar and from Nakir when I couldn't even restrain myself when Shaitan whispered in my ear, dead, in dead silence, only the moving of the earth I can hear. I hope in Allah's mercy, but I feel that His justice is near. How weighty were my sins, that they may tip my scale of deeds. I cry out in fear in my grave, and yet not a single soul heeds. No friends, no family, no children to rescue me in my time of need. Even the joy that was once air, I can no longer enjoy to breathe. Every day, hour and second lived, are roads that to my grave lead. The only thing left worth counting are the prayers upon my prayer beads. What hope is there for me who with his actions hadn't believed? What hope is there for me if my beloved does not intercede? Oh Allah, protect me from that first night I spend in the grave. How apt is it that the master is feared so much by his slave. Protect me from the day I watch all those who I once knew in life leave. And I am left shrouded and alone as a single human heartbeat I crave. And the darkness is suffocating with not an ounce of air saved and the fear is so overwhelming that no man can pretend that he's brave and you wonder on who you've upset, who forgot and who forgave for nothing can save you now save your deeds and what little you gave when the width of the grave is tight its narrowness causing me pain and I can feel the crushing of the earth and I'm begging it to show restraint and I can see small creatures moving, seeking the blood in my bloodless veins. And Munkar and Nakir appear, but I can't get my tongue to explain. What refuge do I have? What sort of salvation can I attain? How I yearn just one more day of life so that good deeds I can obtain. What slope will ever be steeper? What hope is there that remains if in the grave I am not rescued by my beloved Hussein? What slope will ever be steeper? What hope is there that remains if in the grave I am not rescued by my beloved Hussein? And though my tongue refuses to move from my soul, I'll plead dearly the same way I visited your grave in my grave, please visit me. Here, crushed by the dust, how I, meant, how I miss the scent of Karbala's dust so terribly. For when this world crushed me in life, it was in your shrine that I found relief. And when you come, don't come alone. Bring Abbas and his chivalry. For never have I cried out, Ya Abu Fadl, and not be saved immediately. Together, soothe my soul and ease the infliction on my body. For indeed, Allah is merciful. And indeed, you are that mercy. And on the day of judgment, when mankind is in fear and shaken, and my scale does not tip to good deeds, but instead to evil and sin, I'll call out to the king of Najaf. 
I'll call out to the king of Najaf like a father is called by his orphan. For I know that between his two hands rests both hell and heaven. I'll bow my head in shame for I am not among his best of men. But I hope that his love for me is as great as my love for him. I hope that his love for me is as great as my love for him. For I prostrated to the Kaaba, knowing that he was born within. That Muhammad is Ali and Ali is him. No doubt and no question. In every moment of strife, a man calls out for his mother. And on this journey of death, I'll yearn the rescue of Fatima, for it is she that is heaven, and heaven can be no other, and the pleasure of Fatima is indeed Allah's pleasure. I hope that she notices me. I hope that she notices me, because I have no worth without her, and if she turns away from me, no hell would be a greater torture, for every man yearns something, and every heart chases its desire, and I pray that I yearn no more than a glance from Fatima to Zahra. It may be that we have good deeds, but our sins are abundant, and to the facade that is this world, we have no detachment. The flesh of brothers in our teeth makes our good deeds redundant. And for those who forsake their prayer is no salvation, only torment. There is no hope for us sinners on the day of judgment, which is why at the door of Fatima, we bow down as servants. Because if the queen of women notices us even for just a moment, then perhaps on judgment day, we can say we were triumphant. Then perhaps on judgment day, we can say we were triumphant. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.